Okay, so Halacha Subachat. So last time we finished with introduction. Right? Did we do introduction? Yes. Oh, yes, I, we, we, uh, last time we learned the uh, like essence of the bra, where it's constituted and stuff. Okay. So this chapter, number one, I know page seven, if somebody follows. Okay, so it says uh, prerequisite for making a bra. Introduction. This chapter discusses the important uh, prerequisites. Uh, a prerequisite is that which required beforehand, meaning before you are, you are allowed to say bracha. So, in what condition you should be, like how how like uh, how you should be dressed, uh, like to to what degree you should be dressed, and uh, like in, in what uh, um, position you should be, and stuff like that, right? And all of your like surroundings. So, one more time, this chapter discusses important prerequisites for making a bracha. In section A, we discuss the prohibition of making bracha in the presence of a person who is improperly clad. So meaning uh, improperly clothed. Right? For example, although uh, men may make a bracha in presence of other men who are wearing uh, bathing suits, he may not do so in the presence of his wife while she is so clad. Okay, so that's a big difference between men and women, right? Uh, continue. The section B, we discuss being adequately dressed while making a bracha. For example, although one makes a bracha while clad only in a bathing suit, right, one may not make bracha while wearing only bathrobe without fastening a belt. It's actually, believe it or not, it was our discussion yesterday, right? So you said that uh, you have to like clothes yourself, or maybe he has a belt in this uh, bathrobe, right? Uh, in section C, uh, we discuss the halacha of having one head covered while making bracha. For example, if one places his short sleeve over his head, uh, this also is considered sufficient uh, to head covering uh, and bracha may be made. So just uh, so meaning the, the the sleeve with his uh, with his short on or with a jacket or whatever he had. So since it's not part of him, it's like foreign object. So it's going to be like um, head covering. Continue. In section D, we deal with the prohibition of making bracha in the presence of soiled uh, diaper or other fall materials. Okay, so if something smells bad, uh, you're somewhere and there's a garbage, you know, whatever, whatever the thing is, so you're not allowed to make bracha. Uh, in section E, we discuss other prerequisites for making bracha. For example, after scratching one's head, one should not make bracha until he uh, cleans his hands. Okay. Um, in section F, we examine uh, some uh, practical application of halachas discussing this chapter. So I, 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 I like this book. It, he gives like a, like a little a short introduction, like a roadmap, what we're going to learn in this chapter. Okay, no. Okay. In all of the cases discussed in this chapter, uh, where in uh, reciting a bracha, a, uh, a bracha is prohibited. Dabbling or speaking the great Torah is also prohibited. So, I mean, uh, if, and uh, I'll I'll try to to to, to do this uh, re reference always, like uh, uh, when when we're going to learn Zerat Hashem. So, I mean, uh, so if, if 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 you cannot make bracha. Bracha, so you, you cannot uh, pray Shmona Esra, for example, or say Shema. It's it's exactly the same laws. Or say Dvar, dvar Torah, so, um, the Devrei Torah, right? Devrei Torah meaning that, that you cannot learn Torah. Uh, you cannot say Dehile and stuff like that. For example, in section A, two, we discuss that a man may not make Bracha in front of the woman whose arms are exposed uh, from the elbow and above, or whose legs are exposed from the knee and above. Although we only address in the prohibition making bracha, it should be noted that uh, he may not, that he may also not doubt or speak the veritara in front of the woman so dressed. Okay, so here we go. So, so when uh, when uh, some someone right uh, comes to, to my house, so my wife, uh, and there is a woman, so we, we try to uh, to tell her right to, to, to be properly dressed. Right. Otherwise, I mean, uh, it, it it is a problem for 
for example, it's, a, it's only one, one family comes, right? And I mean, it's a small table, right? So you cannot not to see her. Of course, you can look different way and stuff like that. But, uh, but basically, uh, if your sleeve is above the elbow, right? I mean, of course, you don't, you don't see her skirt, how long, like if she is ne next to the table, but, uh, or she like uh, has opening here. So that, that's a big problem, basically. Right, so you're not, you're not allowed to say Kiddush also. Okay, continue. A. So now we're going to one by one and we're going to uh, explain. Yeah. After the fact, does the bracha, is the bracha okay or no? After the fact, uh, I'm not sure. We will, we're going to see. Let's uh, let's go case by case. It's not it's not always the same. I mean, because he was forbidden to die. How, how's it? Uh, okay, I'm not, let's, let, let's go case by case, basically. 